In today's video, we are going to create the slow fading text in Fusion and export it as an effect for the edit page. Let's start by creating a new timeline in Resolve. Once we have our new timeline, we are going to add a new Fusion composition from the effects panel. With the Fusion composition selected in the timeline, we can now switch to the Fusion tab. In the Fusion tab, first thing we need is a text plus node. Press Shift Space to open up the Search Tool dialog and search for the Text Plus node. Press Enter to add it to the Fusion composition. Let's link this to our Media Out node. Now we can add our text in the Text Plus node. Perfect! To see our Text Plus node output, press 1 while the node is selected and it will be shown on the first preview window, which is located at the top on my setup. I'm going to rename this node to Fade Text by right clicking on the inspector on the name of the node. Next, we're going to add a follower to the text by right clicking on the text input and selecting Follower from the pop up menu. This will add a modifier tab to our text node which contains the follower we just created. I'm also going to rename this follower to Fade Text Follower. Let's switch to the shading tab in the follower from which I'm going to add a keyframe to the opacity. But before we do that, let's make sure we are on frame 0. Now, I'm going to add a keyframe and set the opacity to 0. Let's move to frame 10 by entering 10 in the frame text box and then add a new keyframe. In this keyframe, let's set the opacity back to 1. If we preview the composition by moving the frames, we'll see that the complete text fades in from frame 0 to frame 10. Because the keyframes are on the follower, we can now go to the timing tab of the follower and input a delay. Now, as you can see, the opacity animation will be applied to each character with a delay, which is exactly what we need. Pretty awesome! Next, I'm going to make the fade in animation a bit smarter and easier to configure. For this, I'm going to add some additional controls to the text box. Select the node, right click and choose Edit Controls. First control I'm going to add is a frames per second control with the number type, which I will calculate using an expression later on. Because of that, the other options for the control are not so important right now. After we edit the control, it will show up in the User section under the Tools tab. But before adding an expression to it, let's add another control called the Fade Speed in Seconds, which will determine the duration of the fade in effect of the text. I'll give it some defaults and press OK to add it. We are now done adding our controls. Time to work on the expressions. First. I'll add an expression to the frames per second field by right clicking and choosing Expression. We can now paste the expression to calculate the frames per second for the composition. I'll share the expression in the description with you. Once we apply the expression, it will show 60, which is indeed the FPS I'm using for this project. Now that we know our frames per second, we can use this to calculate our delay to match the fade speed in seconds. Let's switch back to the modifier and add the expression to the delay field. Again, I'll share the expression in the description, but basically it calculates a value for the delay to make sure the animation text speed exactly matches the time we set in the fade speed in seconds field. To test it out, I can go back to the tools tab and under the user section, change the fade speed value and notice how the fade in animation adjusts itself automatically. Pretty cool! Time to export this as an effect for the edit page. For this, we can right click on the text node and choose Macro, Create Macro. Let's give the macro a name and choose which parameters we want to publish. I want to keep the text node as flexible as possible, so I'm going to select almost all parameters. Sadly, there is no easy way to select all the fields and we need to select them one by one, which is a bummer. In the user section, we don't need the frames per second field, but we do want the fade speed in seconds field. Press the three dots on the top left and choose save as. 
and Resolve will come up with a path where we want to save this effect. By default, it will be under the Macros folder. But as we want this to be available in the Edit tab, let's navigate up and save it under our folder in the Fusion Templates Edit Titles folder. After saving the macro, we can press down to close this dialog and go back to the Edit tab. If all goes well, in the Effects panel, under the Titles group, our effect will be available. I saved it under the Gfinity folder, and as we can see, it does show up under Titles Gfinity. Awesome! I can now drag and drop this to the timeline, and in the Inspector tab, we can see all the published fields, and all the way down, there is the Fade Speed in Seconds field, which we can adjust to our needs. We have created our custom text fade in animation. Pretty cool. If you're not afraid of programming, here is a pro bonus tip for you. As we published a lot of properties, it is kind of frustrating to scroll down in the inspector to get to the fade speed property. The only good way of fixing this is by opening the file we saved earlier in an editor and make some code changes. We can either move the field to the top of the structure, or what I like very much is to group the fields we exposed by adding a page field in the structure. All the fields until the next page field will be grouped under the page name we provided, which at the end makes this effect much easier to use in the edit page. Hope you liked this video and thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before leaving and until the next video.